here we are. Oh my gosh, it's been weeks, I think, since we have last reached out to you guys. And It's been a while. Um, we're in a very different location. Uh, we're very tired. <laughs> We've done a lot of driving. We have. And the heat is uh, still around. <laughs> yes, facts and figures number... Week six. Week six. So we've, I think we've missed a week on the facts and figures. Yeah, maybe because two. we put out a video just on South Lafroy, we didn't do a facts and figures last week because we wanted you guys to watch that first and then we can explain everything that happened on that trip. Yeah. And even after that, when we get to Exmouth, we'll tell you a bit about that and then that will wrap up week six. Mm. That's the plan, Stan. That is the plan. We have a few things to, to take you through today. So what we'll do is we'll start with mapping the lap and show you where we've been and then we'll move on. Map the lap. It's so damn hot in here. <laughs> I might get a few flies on the way to the camera. We really need the aircon on. Okay. It's funny, as soon as you pull this out, the flies go. It's like they know. So at the end of week five, we were at Gladstone Bay, that beautiful uh, location on the bay, or at Shark Bay. So that was down here near Warramal. So, oh, that's a hint, I got my nails done. Haven't seen that on an episode. <laughs> so we went from Gladstone Bay up to Carnarvon. So that was a short drive. That was the purpose of staying at Gladstone Bay to make that drive to Carnarvon uh, much quicker. We stopped at Carnarvon to go to a caravan park, <coughs> rest up, <coughs> excuse me, and you know make use of the swimming pool and reset uh, before we took off. When we were in Carnarvon, these locals actually told us to go to the Quabba blowholes. They said that was really good and the fishing there was good and cray fishing was good there. So we did a short trip out of Carnarvon to the Quabba blowholes. So as you can see, it's just off the highway. Can you see that, Dale? So you go back to the main highway and then you go off. I think it was about 75 Ks. So we stayed at the Quabba blowholes for one night. Then back to the highway and we go up and now we turn the map over. The map's had a bit of work done to it yes. since since you've last seen. It's had a lot of... Uh, it's had a bit of maintenance. Tape. Okay, so now we're getting to the top end. So that was Quabba here. So we came back to the uh, main highway. And this was a big driving day. So uh, we drove here to Man Manila, Manila Bridge. And we actually had breakfast there, had a bit of a rest. It was stinking hot. Do you remember that, Dom? Mm, yeah. yeah. It is hot and not dusty. It is just damn hot. <clears throat> we are at the Manila rest area. So we've driven about an hour and 45 minutes from the Quabba blowholes. Well, Troy has. And we've stopped here to have some breakfast. It's quarter to 10 in the morning and it's 42 degrees. So we've, we've parked in the only little spot of shade that we could find. It's so hot. Behind the car is a massive river, which is just bone dead dry, um, which a lot of it is up here. It seems like they haven't even had a wet season yet. Plenty of bins, there's a dump point, there's toilets over there, which I just used. They got toilet paper in there. So I'll tell you what, the facilities in WA, rest areas, are the best. Can we? It's hot. The Chinese laundry up here. It did well, it did well staying up there. It's not even pegged. <sighs> what you making, Bobby? I'm Ooh. just having a wrap. Jesus. What's happened to the sandwich box? We had breakfast there, kicked on, and then we went up this road here. We bypassed Coral Bay. Now, there's a couple of ways you can get to South Lafroy. So our goal was to go from Quabba to South Lafroy. We weren't going to Exmouth. You can 
Google was telling us to come up here and cut across this track here. That's Ningaloo Road and that takes you basically straight to South Lafroy. That's the quickest way to get there from the south. That road was closed because it was completely sanded out. I think they had a fire along there and, it's, and it burnt out all the vegetation. So then as soon as you get some wind, it, it just blows the sand over the top of the road and it's massive mounds of sand. A few people had actually tried to cross that before they closed it and that was a nightmare. They just got bogged after bogged and they, yeah. that's why they closed the road. So we didn't know. So we So Google was taking us that way. We got to here and it had a sign there saying Ningaloo Road closed. Okay, so we've got to keep going straight. Google rerouted because we had a little bit of service and it took us to this track here. Can you see that track? Which cuts across the range to the coast. You get to that track, there's a padlock on the gate. Through that. Hey. We're not getting through there. Well, this is a shambles because we booked three nights at Ningaloo Station at South Lafroy and there's so far there's been two cut throughs to that. But now the final way is through Exmouth. So then it makes sense to just stay at Exmouth for three nights first because we've already driven five hours. Well, the, the road's closed down there. Yeah, so the road's, the Ningaloo Road is closed because of the sand. All the sand's blown over the road. This is the second alternative. And the this is locked. locked. So they've obviously locked it for the wet season, which is not happening. So I don't know whether we go to Exmouth to the resort and go, can we stay? But then we're going to have wind over there. Because it's 60 k's to Exmouth now. And then you've got to go around the other side. And it's 45 degrees. Oh, it's hotter than what that. What would you do? Seriously, it is hotter than that. All right, well, we're going to move. We can't stay here. Oh, shit, it's hot. Question mark. Question mark. Jesus, how have you been sitting, darling? Oh, I've been kicking back like, like a king. Oh, poor Harrison. Like king Junior. You can't get through there. So after getting stuck at Ningaloo Road and then this this road here, I'm not sure what it's called, we ended up calling the Ningaloo Visitor Centre and asking them how do we get to South Lafroy because these two roads are closed? She said this road here always has a padlock on it. So I'm not sure why Google still takes you this way or I'm not sure if the padlock's on in the wet season, but you can't go through there. So the next option was to keep going through to Exmouth. At this stage, I think we got to Exmouth at around maybe three o'clock and it was so hot and we were exhausted and we were debating whether we just stay in Exmouth for a night. Even though we had already paid for a night at South Lafroy, we were debating whether to stay there for a night and then just go to South Lafroy the next day for two nights. But we refueled, we let Coco out at the beach for a little bit and then we decided to kick on. Which in turn you would have seen on last night's episode how tired we were and how we got there so late because of all the dramas of getting there. Back to the map. We've started at Quabba. We were only supposed to go to here. We've now had to go all the way to Exmouth, around Cape Range, so around the tip, back past all these campsites <clears throat> and say South Lafroy is here. Okay. And as you saw, we got there at quarter to seven at night. So that's where we are. And then <clears throat> we stay at South Lafroy for, for three nights and then we've got to go back past these campsites, back through Yardy Creek to Exmouth. And that's where we finish up this week. Okay, so back to Carnarvon, we pulled in there. We uh, had a really nice campsite, uh, which you would have seen. We splashed out and we got a wine and cheese platter to enjoy as well. 
while we were there troy actually fixed our water tank and a lot of you have asked about this and how it's going <laughs> uh, massive support in and um comments in regards to the fixing of the water tank or what it co could have possibly been yeah um, we eliminated all those different issues whether it's air air intake air not happening properly or mm. um so basically if you're just new to the channel or you're just watching this episode for the first time then we had an issue with it. We had a new water tank put in and it wasn't, it was drawing water from the two front tanks but not the rear tank. And just, just um, keep it on your head, babe. It's got to go in go. your ear. <laughs> Ready? Wait, stop, stop. Bloody flies. And uh, yeah, so what was happening is we weren't, water wasn't coming out of the back tank basically. So in the end, I ended up cutting the line between the back tanks and the two front tanks. Cut the line, I put a, a stop off valve in there, as you'll see in the footage, Laura mm -hmm. put some footage up here. A stop off valve in there, and what I do is once I fill all the tanks up, I turn, the, turn it off and it's only drawing water from the back tank. And then once that back tank's empty, then I turn the two front tanks on and it seems to go through to the pump. Now, this is just a quick fix. Mm -hmm. um, Great Aussie have a shortest that uh, they'll fix it, they'll get it all sorted out for us. They might isolate every single tank, so yeah. it's separate. And the other great reason to do that is because we did copper rock on the back water tank and it hit the sh hit the um, drain valve and it smashed that out and all the water leaked out. So luckily I had that shut off valve where I put that in because otherwise we would have lost all of our water and we ended up only losing one tank. So, um, because we literally just filled up the water tanks and then yeah. we got to the next destination well, and it was zero. Well, what's going on here? And then I went and checked and of course a rock had hit that um, and smashed that off. Mm. It's like, of course it has. Anyway, he did, that's a, all fixed. he did a good job. Well, I'm your Matt King. Yeah, sorry. That's me work, Matt. Okay. Me workbench. All right, okay. you guys are probably absolutely sick of hearing me talk about this bloody water tank and I'm sick of talking about it. Give me the tip. But, um... I think I've finally got a solution. I've tried everything. I've tried the crimped hose. That hasn't worked. I've tried the breather to the tank. That's all clear. That hasn't worked. But one thing I did notice is when they put the extra tank in, they put a T-piece, a T-piece right at the center here. So one goes direct, directly to the two front tanks and the, and then the other one goes directly to the back tank. So it's the pump's central to all three tanks, okay? So what's happening is the two front tanks empty first. I don't know why, but they do. So then they're fully empty. Then what it's trying to do, it's trying to suck through a T-piece. It's trying to suck the water from the back tank into that T-piece and then back to the pump. And I think what's happening is it's sucking air from those two front tanks. So, I've got a little shuttle valve and I'm gonna go under there and just put that in. Absolute worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, because you just keep it on. So the idea is you shut the two front tanks off and then it should suck the water from the back tank to the pump. We utilize that whole rear tank and then we turn this back on and then it will utilize the two front water tanks. So that's the thought process of what I'm thinking. Uh, I've got my little muck mat here as a, as a little bench. I'm gonna get right up under there. All right. So all the tanks are full of water too at the moment. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> what are you doing? Is there any damage under there that we don't know about? Oh, no, not at this stage, oh, but God. time will tell. Hey, darling, what are you doing? Coco, you come to see Dad? Come to help me work? Hey, yeah, good girl. Cool under there. That's a good girl. Watch me shades. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> The whole family's here. <laughs> all right, so I think I'm going to cut this pipe here. Oh, jeez. That goes all the way to the back tank and also the pump. All right, 
tub. Might get a bit wet here, but I'll take one for the team. Okay, go. Look out, girl. You're gonna get wet. Look, it's a 43 degree day. All right. Shut that off. See the things I do, darling, for this family? Just constantly on, on, constantly on the clock. Just put the shutoff valve in, open, close. Let's go and use this back tank, put the pump on. Good thing is we're at a caravan park so we can always doesn't matter how much water if we if we waste a little bit of water that's fine hopefully um, this gives anyone else an insight into something if something goes wrong with your caravan you can get under and do, do something similar hey girl you good girl all right so I've got the two front tanks turned completely off no water can get through there I'll put the pump on we're all at 100% every tank. Let's see if she splutters and kicks around. Oh, hello. Don't tell me. I don't want to call it too early. We've got the washing machine and the dishwasher running at the same time, so it's a lot of water getting pumped through there. She might be a bloody beauty, Tex. King, I've had a win. Do you know what happens when you have a win? Yep. Get a beer. Get a beer. You sit there, Dad. I'll get it. You've been hard at it. <laughs> I bloody fixed that tank. I can't believe it. That's turned off, so don't let that fool you. That's fully turned off because I, I wanted to test the tank. And it's a good idea if you have issues, don't try to fix them unless you really have to. Don't try to fix it out in the bush somewhere because one, you're going to waste water. Two, you're not around, you know, Bunnings or anything. You can go and pick up some pieces. I was lucky enough, I bought a bladder for the car, a big water bladder, and I had that shut off, shut off valve in it. So I've, I've stolen from Peter to pay Paul. And, uh, Put that under here, up under there, and then all I've got to do is when that. I know it's a bit of a bit of a pain, but when that back tank empties, it'll start to splutter, and all I've got to do is go and turn that tap back on, and we are good. Oh, there you have it. God, finally. Thanks to everyone that's given me some tips along the way has really helped even though they haven't really been that problem it's still it's good to just to you know tick it off process of elimination yeah process of elimination this is a great man once said <laughs> after a couple of swims in the pool at the caravan park they highly recommend it really relaxing we went into town, which is literally up the road, yeah. <laughs> to uh, the, I think it was the Port Hotel for dinner. And we sat out that side there because we had Kui. Yep. We had a great meal there and we met some locals that actually gave us some tips. Yeah, they said get out to Quabba. They said literally, you know, you walk out there, waste deep water and you just pull craze out. And mm. I'm like, Sounds really? too easy, doesn't so it? So I was super excited the night. Like, I didn't sleep. I was like, oh, how good is this? Tomorrow we're going to get crazy. Right. And I'm telling, telling Dad, and he's he's all up and about. But, um... They called it Black Rock? Yeah, Black Rock. Black Rock. Or Cray Rock. And fish around Black Rock. Um, if you go there, you'll see it. It's It stands out. Yeah. Um, it's a bit further down from, from the main aquarium area where you snorkel. Mm. Um, but it's a good spot. If it's not windy, like anywhere, if it's not wind, if it's blowing a gale, it's a bit, yeah. bit annoying. I did go snorkeling out at that black rock, 
and there's plenty of sharks around there too, just to, to let you know that. Um, and I couldn't find any crays. So, so I prayed out. Yeah. All right. He's got the shoes on. What does that mean? We're going to go see if we can pull a cray out of the water. Not Tay Tay, Cray Cray. That's it. Yeah? Come on, darling. Someone's Cray Cray. Lift. Heading out to Black Rock. Not Black Rock in Victoria. No, it's a it's a rock just outside of the campground. You've got to drive down here to get here. This is where all the locals go to get their crayfish and they actually fish off here as well. It's pretty good fishing. Yeah. So the locals told us. You can basically stand up and waste waste water and see crays there. So I'm about to go find out if it, that's the truth. It's just been low tide and we just walked out over the beach there and you can see, you can pretty much walk out, swim a little bit. But the question is, are there crays? It's not whether we can get there, it's whether are there crays. Got the ball? Good girl. Drop it. One, two. All right, we go home. Home. Drop the ball. There you go. That's Black Rock. What is it, Pete? Does he want your ball? Oh, I think he's got a broken leg. Did you out to see, buddy? He's just at the reef now and then he'll just walk across. He's got reef boots on that fit into his flippers. It's not a good sign. That to me says no go. Praise one, Troy none. <laughs> Here comes Sharky. No crows out there, darling. Hmm. I reckon the locals have cleared it, cleared it right out. Yeah, okay. Anything? Any fish? Yeah, some nice fish. Big ones. Be alright, spear fish. I think on the other side where the waves are crashing in is where they'll be. Yeah. But I'm not going out there. It's too hard. It's like it crushes you against some rocks. Yeah. But don't have a weight belt on. Was it worth it? Sorry? Was it worth it? It was fun. Yeah. Yeah, and then we finished off there. We drove around town a little bit, watched a couple of punch-ons mm. between a couple of young ladies. That, that was interesting. Thought that was just, just that was an eye opener for Harrison, by the way. So it's just remarkable that that stuff goes on. I just yeah, I can't after dinner, it. you just you just hear in these towns you hear a lot of screaming, yelling, yeah, like swearing, um, fighting, yeah. and you're just kind of like, what's going on? And mm. it's normal for the local. They just citizens. ignore it. Like this punch on was full on punch on, and there's a group of people that just weren't even watching it. Yeah. It's just like this happens all the time. There were two teenage girls on the corner of the road just having a fight and <laughs> we were just like, what is going on? Yeah, and anyway. police are up and down the road all the time. Yeah. But, um, you know, once I spoke to the locals and obviously it gets a bit of a bad rap, pretty much like a lot of these towns, um, you know, including Sejuna. Um, but when you dig deep into the town, there's actually really great people there. So... Mm. Um, we, we enjoyed it actually, just before we leave Quabba, that that's where Chloe got taken, that mm. young girl got taken if you're not familiar with the area. So, um, and it's, that's the first time we'd ever been there. So it was a bit like what you see in the news, it looked totally different, it didn't did. it? It yeah. did, and I've been meaning to go back to the footage of the news of when sh that all happened mm. to, to kind of um, put it into my mind of, 
the location because where we camped was nothing like what we saw on the footage. For the yeah, video. and like, I'm not sure if then. you guys will see in the foot. I don't think you do see on the footage. There's a lot of shacks along there. Yeah, and it's and. Um, some communities live in there as well so yeah, you can sort of picture a little bit of what happened with Chloe and stuff but yeah it's basically just to remind you if that's if you're not familiar with the area that's where that is mm. so a bit of history yeah modern history there. beautiful spot yeah, if, if you have no wind there it's it'll be amazing yeah in terms of the blowholes itself I put some footage in here mm. now of the blowholes but it wasn't spectacular at the time that we went yeah and that's probably Possibly because of the wind or It's got to be the wind, the tides. The tides. So. Um, but would you go back? Yeah, I would. Yeah, it's a good spot to camp. Yep. And if you've got good conditions, snorkeling there would be amazing. We just didn't have the greatest conditions for snorkeling. Yeah. Sorry, we've skipped a, a bit. Before we got to Quabba, we went to the Space Museum, which oh, we showed yeah. you yep. in that episode last week. And... We got there so early that we were parked out the front with the gates closed and we cooked breakfast yeah, just did. out the front. <laughs> Here we are at the Space Museum and we're just about to have some breakfast because this place is closed at the moment. It opens at 10. It's open between 10 and 2, 2 p.m. So we figured let's just have some breakfast. How hot is it at the moment? 34. 34, it's 9.30 in the morning. It's hot. And today we're off to the blowholes. So we're leaving Carnarvon. It's called Carnarvon, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we're leaving Carnarvon, straight to the blowholes. where there might be craze on the go. Yeah, if you get the opportunity, go into that museum. I'm not much of a museum person, so to speak, but I enjoyed that. That was it was really that good. It was really good. And if you have a dog, they have the owners that run it at the moment, they have kids that are willing to dog sit for you. Just check because they were only there for three months they and then Yeah, they they're travelling themselves, so yeah. they they swap over another another group of people come in. Yeah. So they were, were fortunate enough that they had two kids and they looked after Coco. Yeah whilst we went through there. Another thing to mention on that day that we went to the Space Museum, we had our hottest day on tour, so it got to 47 degrees. Uh, the next day in Carnarvon, we had already left, the next day Carnarvon got to 49.4 degrees, mm. so. It was supposed to get to 50. Yeah. Like, I've never been into 50 degree it was, weather. <laughs> it was hot, so it was actually a really nice relief to go to Quabba because you had that on yeah, shop breeze. So that was, <clears> that was good. Look, anything over 40 degrees up, up in that area is, is hard to deal with. It is. All right, let's go. Let's talk about the tracks. So you guys would have seen our episode last night of uh, South Lafroy. Mm. We just did an episode on South Lafroy because so much happened on that trip. Obviously, we got two flat tires. Mm. We only showed you one. We got two flat tires. We ripped the mud flap off our car. We got bogged several times, mm. multiple times. We got bogged. Uh, the heat was challenging and this was after 10 hours of driving that's right and so we'll coming start. to those defense force gates and having to determine whether we take an alternate route or we just go down through the defense force area was another thing that we had to take on board yeah it's important to note because um it's easy to get caught up in you know you can make youtube content and it's it's easy to just put in all the happy times and and all that sort of stuff and and you sometimes do get a bit of backlash if you're a bit grumpy or a bit you know you're not up and about in front of the camera and this is reality of traveling like you things are unpredictable mm. when you travel and 
um, things happen and you've just got to grind your way through it and especially with that heat the roads the flat tires the getting bogged everyone's trying to work together not just Laura and I like dad and Harrison as involved as well they're trying to help and it's it's challenging so we want to realistically show you guys the whole concept of what happens when you travel not just the really happy times yeah so and your dad and Harrison were amazing because you've got to think that Troy and I are the only ones that do the driving so mm. we've driven all the way from Quabba to Yardy Creek and then all the challenges start so we're losing our patience we're tired mm. um, the heat's getting to us and we're losing energy as well yeah so then they pick up on that and then you know Harrison will get out and start digging for max tracks and yeah. your dad will you know give us some tips on how to get out of here or you know find things to help us get out yeah. out of the bog and stuff it, so that it, was really good it was pretty it was pretty good at um sitting on chewy which <laughs> <laughs> which was you know that that was just one of those days you had you just had to laugh yeah and but in saying that's how that you get out of it. the good thing is that what the four of us are quite resilient yeah. i don't know how a family a young family with really young kids oh, would get through tough. a day like that yeah. um but I, I said at the end of the episode don't be in a hurry to get to your campsite and don't be in a hurry to get out so don't plan anything because anything can happen yeah. so make sure you've got cold drinks at hand make sure you've got some snacks because if you get a flat tire or bog it's going to take probably an hour to get that rectified yeah. so yeah just keep that in mind when you go out there um thanks for all the tips on how to get out of a bog as well oh it's yeah been plenty of those crawl control yeah. traction control um we we tried everything so um the only thing we didn't have is is tails on our max tracks we do have them i just didn't put them on and trust me it probably would have we probably would have found one maybe max track and most, the other times i'll bury that far that far down you're not going to you could have a 20 meter rope on there and you probably wouldn't find it it was very soft but sand we will try that theory next time they definitely help they, d they would definitely help yeah. but you when you're in the situation it's 40 odd degrees oh. and you're just trying to get out of there and you're just you're trying to you especially at, at yardy creek we we thought we'd we'd banked up about four or five caravans behind us mm. so when you do something like that it's panic starts to set in a little yeah. bit and it's just flat all hands on deck let's yep. get out of here and unbeknownst to us there was another track that went right around mm. the Yardy Creek crossing which we explained on the on the episode a couple of people asked us which site we stayed at so we stayed at South Lafroy we only went to South Lafroy and we stayed at site 16 we originally booked 14 that's the one that we got bogged at don't go to 14 uh, we managed to book online because we had Starlink and change it to 16 so yep. that's what we did there okay tracks leading into Ningaloo so we've told you how the Ningaloo road was closed then Google rerouted us to a track that goes cuts through the range and mm. that's not open we know now in future to call up and the visitor centers are key but we didn't think of that Google just told us to go this way and that's what we followed thinking that's the road that's open yeah no we don't only just use Google we have we've got maps a couple of different varieties of maps that's quite well detailed so don't think because you've got HEMA maps that you want to you're actually going to get a road that you're supposed to go yeah. on because they're not all marked that's well and the thing is these maps are marked so we could see okay there's another road coming up we can take that one mm. but you don't know if they're open a map's not going to tell you if they're open so what you need to do this is a tip for you guys if you're heading to Ningaloo or the Outback wherever just before you get in your mind we're going to go there next just ring the next town um say ring Coral Bay Visitor Centre and go yeah. we're going to South Lafoy can you tell me if the roads are open mm. what condition they are That'll save you a lot of headaches yeah. and it would have saved us a lot of time. Look, some some visitor centres are really good and they know that information. Yes. Some do not. That's so right. the other thing that you can do is ring up um, the local council and ask about the roads. Yeah, or there is a roads authorities in WA. Yeah. When I called them, they tell you to go back to their website because their website's live and it's got a map and you can zoom in. And see what's open and closed. <coughs> Bless you. And it will tell you um, 
whether there's roadworks on that road or whether it's closed um, or whether there's flooding and to take caution. Yeah. Our other tip for you guys is when you when you're going on your trip so say you're planning to go on your big lap next year or 2026 wait until then to buy your maps because I after what we went through I read I went through this map and I think it's somewhere on this map it showed me when it was published so if it was published in 2019 well that's um five years ago yes so it, it, does, you, it does change your when you go to buy a map from a news agency just make sure you check when it was last published because there might be more up to date and you can go directly to HEMA or wherever you get your maps from National Geographic Australian Geographic yeah um, and get a more <clears throat> up-to-date one okay get a few yes Ta carry paper maps <clears throat> and also I'd yeah strongly suggest get the HEMA HEMA maps for, you know, for those remote areas for our future trips, I'm actually going to buy a proper atlas, a detailed atlas, and again, I'll be making sure that it was printed uh, not too long ago. That's about it. That is about it. <laughs> okay, Ks. So from Gladstone Bay to Exmouth, we did a total of 6,922 Ks. That's where we're at. We spent in the week from Gladstone Bay to Exmouth, we spent $498 on fuel, $444 on groceries, $374 on accommodation. So that's your sites at Ningaloo plus Exmouth plus Carnarvon. Uh, we spent $356 on activities. Now that is $60 for the Space Museum, $51 we go to the Ningaloo Aquarium, you'll see that, and $245 on our hair. Most of that's my hair. <laughs> okay. True. So that was activities, miscellaneous, $50. Eating out, $244. So we ate at a pub, a brewery, mm. another um, sort of backpackers hotel as well. Drinks, $24 and cash out, $300. So um, it was a bit of an expensive week, as you can see. Yes. Also, we'll just touch base on some audio issues oh, yeah. that we had on that South Lafroy uh, episode. We mm. apologise for that. Um, it was a tricky situation. Our, our GoPro 9 had just basically um, it got some water in it and it stuffed up. So we had to use the 10. We couldn't have the microphone on it. So, you know, sometimes uh, with filming, these things happen. Uh, it's pretty unavoidable. We could have cut, completely cut it out. Or maybe put some text down there but yeah. um i didn't want to cut it out because we had caught a fish right <laughs> on my reel well, i caught the fish what? what happened was because you didn't see it so i had put we were filming we weren't getting any bites i put the gopro on the side of the kayak which you would have seen and then you would have heard, heard troy go wind it wind, wind it, it wind it and just yeah. going stupid so i was winding my reel got stuck so i gave the no. fishing rod hey i gave the fishing rod to him and then he wound in the baby cod it's my fish <laughs> it is that's what happened uh, it's it happened like this <laughs> oh here we go how did it happen Enlighten me. It, happened, it happened like this laura 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 hooked the the um cod yeah. Yeah, Laura first hooked the cod and she's just sitting there and she's going, uh, uh, and I'm like, I'm like, wind it up, wind it up. And she just couldn't wind it for some reason. She basically just threw me the rod and then I quickly got it out of the out of the coral because not and I said, Darling, you gotta wind it up. <laughs> anyway, so I pulled it in the boat and I said, It's not your fish, I caught it. <laughs> oh my god. So I was winding it and as I said the reel got stuck and now I'm not sure Well how did I wind it up? I then? don't know. You're stronger. <laughs> but I was gonna say I'm not sure if that's because I ruined it by dunking it in the seawater to clean the sand off. She it. had a bit of sand on it <laughs> and she literally leaned over the the boat and just dunks it in the water and I'm like, Oh my god. That's the worst thing you, you don't can do. do that. that not only five minutes later, Laura had hooked onto another, like a big cod on the same rod, and she she just panicked at the same time. She's like, oh, I don't know what to do. And it basically just went straight under the coral. Mm. And and so she passed me the rod again, which we didn't show. And I said to Laura, you're going to have to get in the water 
and go and try to pull it out. So she put all her snorkeling gear on, jumped in there, and by the time she did that, the cod had gotten yeah. off. So. But it was a really cool way to like it was fun. fish and try and catch fish. Um, we had you, a good day. It was pretty windy too. So. Yeah, you would have seen us put in the GoPro in and out of the water because the minute that Troy would put a line in, I'd put the GoPro in and the fish would just, you know, gravitate to mm. it. But it weren't. The, they weren't the type of fish that we wanted. Yeah. But I want to show you a couple of other maps that we got. We're giving you these tips because I wish we had known these before we had ventured out to WA. So back when I was working... I printed off the South Lafroy campground from the Parks website, the WA Parks website. Now, I did a lot of research between South Lafroy, Windabandi, North Lafroy, and anywhere else that you could go with dogs. And I kept coming back to South Lafroy, and I'm so glad that we did because another map that we got, which is key for you guys to choose your campsite. This is the Cape Range National Park map and Ningaloo Coast. So it's two sides, right? The side we want to show you is this one. This has the coastline with all the campsites. Grab the camera yeah. Right. This is us here at South Lafroy. So it's got a dump point, you can have fires, you can have dogs, and you can camp there. Um, point Billy, which we had a debacle at North Lafroy and then Windabandi. So it looks like you can have dogs at all those places. They've all got dump points. I tell you what, the facilities are pretty good. None of them have toilets, but dump points, no bins, I don't think. Uh, but dogs is good. What you need to be mindful of is, is these colours, okay? The yellow is a recreation zone, so that's fine. You can paddle and everything there. The blue is a general use zone, so that's fine. And then the orange is a recreational use zone, but it's Commonwealth Government, so that's that's all fine. If you're staying at Windabandi, this green one is actually a sanctuary zone, so you can't fish there. You can snorkel, but you can't fish, you can't spearfish, until you get out to these waters. Now, where that boundary is, is your guess is as good as mine. Okay. Well, you use your, your geo mapping to get that. How? What geo mapping? When you're snorkeling. On your sounder. If you're out that far, you've got a oh, boat. Oh, if you're in a boat, yeah. that's different. But if if you're you're not swimming out that well, far. Well, if you're, you're, in, a you're kayak in a boat without no, a sounder. You're not going to be out there in a kayak. Yeah. So that was some of the things that we looked at. And then as you get further up, closer to Yardi Creek, you've got Osprey Sanctuary Zone. You can't fish there. You can only snorkel. Um, and then you've got a couple of other campsites. If you want to take a boat out, you need to find out where the boat launching points are because they may not be at your campsite. Um, they're the best tips I can give you. South Lafroy covered everything for us. We didn't have to worry about any sort of sanctuary zones or not fishing. Um, we didn't have a boat to launch. We could carry your kayak out, so that was fine. Yeah, there's a lot of rules and regulations. It's some sometimes can be confusing. But uh, if you've got a map like that, you can sort of work out where you are and yep. stuff. Got Next there? thing here is the Ningaloo Coast Guide. Now, I can't remember where we got these from, but they're at a lot of the caravan parks or visitor centres. This is everything that you need to know about the Ningaloo. You can use a drone there, by the way. you just got to follow the rules. Okay, this, this page here. What you can and can't spearfish. So luckily we had this book so we knew and then you just got to be mindful when you're out in the water that you're not going to hit the wrong fish or what you can see is correct. But this book was really helpful for us. And then again here it's got an activity zone so it, it will show you all the campsites and whether you can fish, spearfish, launch your boat, have dogs, snorkel. All that jazz. So before you hit <coughs> South Australia, Western Australia, Northern Territory, no matter which way, you, which direction you're going from, how you're going to get to Western Australia, try and get your hands on some really good brochures, mm. and that will determine which road you're going to take, which direction you're going to go, and which campsite you're going to stay at. Yeah, the best thing is visitor centres, yep. information centres. They've got it all, so um, they can tell you. Although they didn't really tell us about. Um, Yardi Creek, we'd only seen sort of on YouTube what how Yardi Creek was and it was interesting that what, when we called up the Exmouth Information Centre 
um, or the Ningaloo Information mm. Centre, she didn't mention anything about um, Yardy Creek. She basically said, oh, yeah, it's a bit soft at Yardy Creek, but you'll be fine. Yeah, she so, didn't tell us about the alternate route along the, yeah. the actual creek line, which was... So ask as many questions as you can <clears throat> if you're unfamiliar with the area. Um, There's no dumb question. No, that's right. If you're not from the area, you're not going to know. And the conditions change all the time. Like, they just had a <clears throat> cyclone, so God knows what the Yardy Creek Road's like now. <laughs> yeah, we talked... To, we basically talked to a lot of a lot of people. We, we try to talk... You know, if I'm at a service station, I'll have a yarn with someone, like, yeah. and find out local things to do or you know what you can and can't do basically yeah. so basically if you're crossing paths yeah you just ask someone go what's the road that that way like or yeah um, what was that true. campsite like yeah okay last thing everyone wants to know about your kayak and your yes. rotor so you yep. better they've seen it in the footage um you've seen it's had <clears> myself harrison coco in there it is designed it's a kayak from bcf called primal um, it is designed for one person and you can stand up in it. Um, we use it for three people and a dog. So it's a, it holds your weight no problems whatsoever. I absolutely love it. Um, it's versatile. It's easy to pump up with those those pumps that you can get the, with the 12 volt pumps. Yeah. Um, it's designed for fishing kayak, but you can use it for whatever. You don't have to put a motor on the back of it, but as you can see, we have a motor on ours. You can just use paddles if you want. Um, now I've got the 30, I'm going to have to put, find out the exact mo motor details, but my motor is low enough, which is suitable for that boat. Um, is low enough where I don't need a license. I don't need to register the boat itself. So As in the, the the motor size, horsepower, yeah, the is, horsepower is low enough. Yeah. yeah. So I what I did want the the next level up, and they they advised me not to. But As you can see, I ran it off my my batteries for my drill. They work awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to keep it that way because it's a little bit. It's probably not as safe as what it could be because it's not a fully in seal, concealed battery and you're out in the water yeah. i mean we got the kayak the day before we left on our trip yeah. so that battery solution was what we could do for then that's right uh, when we get home you'll look at getting a proper lithium i'll setup. put a proper battery yeah. in it i'll have a I'll, I'll put a sounder on it on there so it'll be set up for fishing um but yeah we didn't have the time to get it all finally yeah. all sorted and where'd you get the motor from i got them i got the motor from anaconda but you can get it from bcf as well and the motor was only like two hundred and fifty dollars or something. Yeah, it was that's pretty, what I thought. very cheap. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm stoked with it. All right, we've got a different angle. The battery went flat. We don't have a spare one, so we plugged straight into the wall. Um, that's about it, guys. That's it. That's done. Facts and figures. Hopefully, you're enjoying the content. If you are and you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And uh, like and uh, like and uh, share to your friends and family. Tuesday next episode, X mouth to. North, south, east, north, south, or east, really, from Exmouth. You just don't know. <laughs> Can't go west. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. All right, have we'll a good see one. you soon. See have ya. a good week. Bye bye.